Hi and welcome to this DCP Web HTML5 and CSS beginners tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at CSS fonts. So, let's open up our web browser and we'll open up Notepad++. Let's get our project open. We're working on this Sun project, right? We'll drag that into Google Chrome. We'll drag it also into Notepad++. And we'll also drag our CSS. Let's just align that a bit better into here. So we've got all of our files open. Let's just align this quickly. So in our last tutorial, remember we made this circle just using CSS. So we didn't really draw this in Photoshop or anything. We just used CSS to make that round circle. Um, and today we want to look at fonts, right? So there's a, dip, there's a few different ways to control fonts on this page. There's like a holistic way, so we can use a holistic method to change all of the fonts on the page in one go. So let's look at that first. So we think of these HTML tags as like um, stacking order, right? So you've got your header tag and your HTML, so the HTML sits right at the top, right? It's right at the top. But then we've got this body tag that sits inside. So we can say that this is like a higher level control than this h1 tag because that h1 tag sits inside of the body tag so if we write a css for the body everything inside of its content will inherit what we put into that body tag so if we went to css and like we've targeted this h1 tag we could target the body tag right and in here we can say font family and we can put something like arial so Arial is a type of font, and then when we refresh the page, all of the fonts on the page will turn to this Arial font, right? So we can manipulate the whole page content just with this one tag to say make all of the fonts Arial. We could change it to Vedana, which is V-E-R, Vedana. And when we refresh, we'll see all the fonts will change again. So now they've changed to a different font. So the question is, how do we know what fonts are good to use and which ones are not? Because if you look at a computer, typically, let's just have a look at uh, my computer. If I open up something like LibreOffice, if I look at uh, the fonts, you can see I've got all of these different fonts installed, right? Some of these I've installed myself and some of them are available as default on the computer. But you might be using an Apple Mac, for example, and your fonts might be different from my fonts. So we need to, and one thing you need to understand is the fonts that are being used here are from the system computer, so it's from the, the user's machine, yeah? It's not from uh, some external source. Right now, that's the case. So if we go to Google and type in uh, web safe fonts, we'll see a list here, right? 15 of the best web safe fonts. Let's have a look at... Um, Let's click here and let's see what they say. So in here, got Arial, Helvetica, Times Roman, Times, Corian New. There's all these different fonts that we can use. And we know that these are going to be safe. That's probably a better, better view of this. Let's have a look. Let's click here on CSS, right? So here we can see font family, Times Roman, Times and Serif. So in here, we only typed in one font. Um, but basically what you do is this will be the default font here times Roman so this is the main font that when the web browser looks at the computer is going to say can I find times Roman let me use that font if it can't find that font this is like a backup fonts here so then there's times and then there's serif so times new new Roman times and serif are very similar fonts this is why they're stacked together like this and if you look below you'll see like the groupings of the fonts so you've got Georgia and serif uh, you got all of these different fonts, right? You got sans serif fonts. The difference between serif and sans serif is these ones have these little accents on the letters, right? You can see here, whereas these ones are just like solid shaped letters. You can say they don't have these little accents on the side. So just look at this font style here: Comic Sans, Cursive, and Sans Serif. So if I go here and paste that into here, just like this, and then refresh you'll see a different set of font styles, right? So, and we can try this one here. 
it's a case of just seeing what you like I find this font quite hard to read but it might be okay for a title but then the written content can be in a different font so I'm going to show you that afterwards that we can target the written content separately from the actual titles and and so forth so let's pick a font that we do like let's try this this one here right because this will probably be quite a clean font easy to read so that's nice and easy to read now right now we're targeting the body so we're targeting everything within the body tag right um we could change that body to p for paragraph now we're only targeting things that are in a paragraph tag so if I refresh, this title should not change. It'll be back to its original font, but then all of the body content or the paragraph content, so anything that was a paragraph will have this font applied to it. So what we could do is target the header, or sorry, target this H1 tag with a different font, right? So we could copy this font family. And if I explain this, let me just explain it one. Uh, sorry, we've got P for paragraph, right? So when we're looking at this content, we're not targeting the body tag no more. We're targeting these paragraph tags here and here and here. These ones here and these ones here and these ones here. So we target all of the paragraph tags. So anything that sits inside of a paragraph tag, as far as the software is concerned, we need to use this particular font. So if we wanted to target the H1 tag, how would we do that? We would simply add our font family. So we can copy this line, come down to here and paste it. So this is the font family for the head or one tag. So if we go back here and change it to, let's say Arial Black, and paste that in here. When we refresh, we'll see the title will be different from the rest of the fonts. Now it's targeting that title with that particular font style and the other fonts will be we re retain the default paragraph font right so normally we don't we don't target our fonts by the body because the body is like holistic across the whole page we can do that there are some good value reasons to do that as well um but most of the time we wouldn't do that we would you know target the paragraph tags and then look at what other content we might have and target them separately but it's your choice if you just want simple font straight all the way down the page then you can use this is why HTML is quite flexible right and CSS it's you as the user or the designer gets to choose how you manipulate the content on the page there is no real set rule here uh, it's down for you to experiment right so there's a there's um pros and cons to taking both approaches right but I think this is a better approach because you you can then have your H2 tags. If you had any H2 tags, you could choose the same font again, but this time change the font size, for example, on a H2 tag and use the same font and maybe change the color, for example, right? So what happens if uh, we're a bit bored with fonts and we don't want to use just these, these, these handful of fonts here? It's just a handful, right? There's not many at all. So if we want to now use some more custom fonts, we can go and use Google fonts. So Google has kindly created, not necessarily created, but um, given us developers access to all of these other fonts here. So you can see all these different fonts. Uh, you can click on featured, for example, and you can see all of these different styles of different fonts. These are quite quite interesting aren't they created by Google let's see Google fonts let's have a look at this that's quite an interesting this one here right so when I click this button uh, here this little pop-up will appear right and it's picked all of these fonts and the first thing it says is uh, you've got to use this CSS link here. But it's, it's actually got all of these fonts in there, right? These variations of fonts. So what we can do is just copy this link. So we copy it. This link right here. Maybe it's a bit hard for you to see. So, so basically what I've done, let's deselect them all. So on this page, I want to use these particular fonts. 
for example. I'm going to click select all here. And when I do that, this pop-up will appear down here. I'll click that and then I'll select this CSS, this, this line of code here. And we'll, I'll explain what that code is doing in a moment. Let's just stretch this window back out. And really this line here is referencing a style sheet. Can you see a rel style sheet? So if we go back to our HTML, and if we remember at the beginning, we created our own internal style sheet. So this is called an external style sheet because it's not, it's not a file that sits on our computer. It's external, it's at Google Fonts here, right? And it's using something called a query string to bring in those particular fonts that we've selected. So that's all it is, we paste that here, and then we can use this Pacific, all right? So if we copy this one here, what would be worth doing is copying all of them. So we copied all of them, and then came up to somewhere like, uh, we can go up, go up to here somewhere, or we could type in here, star, let's do backslash, star, Google fonts, right? We can paste all of the fonts that we've got and then close it here. Now we don't have to keep coming back to this document. So we've got all the fonts that we, we got access to. So we can just copy this here and paste it into this. Well, let's not do that. Let's paste it into this header one tag here. This one here. Now when we refresh, we'll get that font style here. You can see, right? And maybe we'll make this like, so depending on the font, it will change the size of the, the font itself. So we might want to set that to something like, uh, let's set it to 350. And refresh, now you can see it's a bit clearer, a bit bigger, right? And you can go and experiment with these fonts. You don't have to use that particular font there. You, we can use, uh, let's try it, this one here. And we have a different type of font in our content. So here we're just simply using an external resource to reference fonts to use in our document. And these fonts, remember, don't sit on the user's computer. They're external. So it doesn't matter if they don't have these fonts installed because when your web page loads, it's not looking for that font on the computer. It's looking for that font on Google's side. Because the document for the H for the CSS is referenced externally, it's not on your machine, or it's not in your environment, it's not in any of the folders that we created, right? So in our in our folders here, we go to CSS. We just got that one CSS file here. There's no fonts or anything installed here. So this is how we can reference different fonts. My advice to you is only use a handful of fonts on your website. And try and keep them this is very like different right this title and then this content below it there's just a big stark difference between them and it looks messy so we want to try and keep our fonts nice and clean i'll use a handful maybe two fonts um at the most when we're building websites because we want our content to be clear so that we're not going from you know, sometimes you can you may need to use more right but in most cases just use a handful of fonts one or two just to um keep your art, keep your content clean, the design clean. So we should probably change that because that is quite different to what the other fonts are. So if we go back to this Google and minimize this. Um, we just use cabin regular, right? So where was it? Cabin regular for the paragraph. So then maybe we use this, this one here. Let's see what that one looks like. Uh, we use this one and we'll get rid of this here and refresh. And we've got that style of font there. So we don't look, maybe we just use cabin on both of them, right? Cabin. Let's keep it consistent. Okay, now we've got a consistent font between the title and the content below. So that's just a brief explanation of using fonts on our um, website. This up here is just commented out. So instead of us, now we can just close down the Google thing, right? Close it down, close down this, 
and have, now we've got a reference to what fonts we are available via Google up here in a comment. So if we want to change the font to something else, we can just copy it from here rather than having to go to Google and check what that font was. We can copy this quicksand and then we've got this style of font, which looks okay actually. Okay, so I hope that's all clear. That's how we reference fonts from the machine and fonts from Google. And there's pros and cons to using both of them, right? The ones from the machine will reference a lot quicker because they're local to the user that's refer that's looking at your website. The ones that are external at Google, at Google will take a little bit longer, but we're talking fractions of seconds here. We're not talking like minutes or hours or anything. It's just milliseconds, right? But all of those seconds or milliseconds or however you want to describe it, they all add up. And what would happen if Google fonts went down one day? What happens if their server crashes or there's a problem? It's highly unlikely because they're going to have backups of their backups and stuff. So it's highly unlikely that will ever happen. But if it did, then these fonts wouldn't show correctly. But that's why you've got sans serif here, yeah? the backup font. So this would be a backup in case Google went down or there's a problem with Google's server. Then this quicksand and this cabin, if you couldn't reference them, it would go to the default font sans serif. And sans serif is, is on our machine as default. Okay, let's close this and let's close this. Hope you find that interesting and I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.